it's good to be back in the chair. I feel like I've been away doing all kinds of photo shoots, videos, YouTube videos, all kinds of things recently. So it's nice to be back in here. Um, absolutely loving the X100. I've been using it loads and oh, it's so good. And in fact, I gave some of my cameras out to my children. Now, up till now, they've had compact cameras, just random ones, which is just, you know, it's kind of good to teach kids how to use cameras. They've been using them and just enjoying that. But they see all these Fujifilm cameras and they're like, uh, when are we gonna get some of the action? So I've been giving them out to my kids, different ones, and they're loving them, it's so good. And in fact, I haven't told them about anything other than the manual setting. So they're just using them all in manual and learning the exposure triangle, even at, you know, my little boy who's, um, who's nine, you know, he's kind of like changing it all and getting it all right. So yeah, this is great. So my daughters, you may have seen on, on Instagram, one of my daughters has got the XM1 and she's loving that and really, really capturing the uh, photography bug. So yeah, this is good. It's good to kind of see my kids really embracing it and using the Fujifilm as well, which is great. Now, today we are going to have a look and think about black and white photography, but from a very specific um, angle, okay? So if you were to look at your camera here, I've got the X-T3 here, and if I was to go into this, I would see that you've got obviously Acros, which is uh, a film simulation that you can buy as a film and Fuji have put it into our cameras as a digital um, simulation but within it you have got yellow, red and green and some people have been asking me well why would you want yellow, red and green on black and white? It doesn't make any sense. Well if you were to go into the say the XC1 here which I've got um, an older generation of Fujifilm camera you will find again you've got options you probably can't see, but options here of black and white, yellow, and let's go down, yellow, red, and green. So the question was, well, what is the, what's that all about? What does that mean? It's very, very simple, and I'm gonna give it to you really quickly. Quick, to help you understand it, in the days of film photography, there would be five different color filters that you would put on your camera. And these would allow those colors to come onto the film and they would block other colors. That's because you don't want a flat, boring image with black and white. You don't just want to remove color. You want to create drama. You want to create some contrast. You want to allow certain colors to be um, stronger than others um, so that you can basically create some depth to your photo. Now, if you're in Lightroom after you've taken, just say you take a normal color image and you turn that to black and white and you go down the side menu and you can see the, um, the kind of uh, temperature gauges that you can change on um, your black and white image. They're basically like the filters. You are allowing different colors in and out of your image and that creates that depth. Well, what Fujifilm have done and probably every cam, cam, camera manufacturer, depending on what camera you've got, they've given you the option within your, um, your camera to actually choose that filter when you take your image, because it will make a difference, because it will basically change the, the, the way your camera sees that color to create the drama and to create the different um, texture on your photo. So what do the three do? Well, this is what happens. If you were to select the red, and let's put a timer on this just to keep me quick. Let's try and make this in three minutes, um, but the timer on there now, I'll try and do each one in a minute. Okay, I'll give it a go. So the red filter, it's gonna allow obviously the reds in, but it also what it will do is it will allow the reds, but it will, um, it will darken the greens, okay? So what it's doing is it's allowing the reds in, but it's blocking the greens, and it's creating probably the most dramatic of the filters. Because what it's doing is creating a high level of contrast. It will darken your shadows massively. Darken shadows. It will also darken your blue sky. So if you're doing a landscape photo and you've got a really bright day, what you will find is your blue sky, blue sky will become black. And it will lose the detail, it will just become like black. Your white clouds will pop because they 
you've got the definition there, the contrast between the white and the, um, and, and the blue it becomes black and white. And you basically get this great drama in your photo. Nice, long, deep shadows, create beautiful landscape photos. In fact, you could probably go into the city and create beautiful um, street photos with that because you're allowing um, that separation there um, really to have its kind of most effect. Um, and actually, when you shoot red, let's just say you were to shoot brickwork, you would see more detail in that brickwork, possibly more than you would see it with color because your the filter is allowing the red through and you are basically um, seeing the detail of that red image. There's so much more, but I've got to make it quick. So that's what the red will do. It's the most dramatic of those three filters. Let's try another color. Let's go for green. Now green is a good filter. It's not as powerful as the the red, um, but it will do the opposite of the red filter. So it will basically allow the greens to become lighter. Um, it will bring in those greens and it will actually darken your reds. You're basically letting the greens in, but you're blocking the reds. Um, so it's good for like foliage. Um, whereas the red filter will give you a good separation between um, flowers and foliage and that kind of thing. The because it's blocking those greens, what you will find with the green filter is it will actually um, make your greens lighter than your reds. So you're basically going to draw in those colors of those greens and it will make it much lighter. It'll also give you a lighter sky. So if you are going to photograph landscapes, what you will find is, is that you will get more detail in your sky because you're getting that kind of lighter feel um, to your photograph. So it's not as much drama, um, but it still does give you an effect which you might be looking for. Again, there's more to it, <laughs> but I've got to be quick to make this, make my three minutes. I don't have a yellow pen, so let's go for purple. Um, so the yellow one, the yellow one is a bit like, it was like, it was the classic filter really. It's good for things like portraits because what it's doing is, it's allowing those yellows through, which gives that warmer tone. In the old days, or even now, you can buy the orange filters, and they were great for portraits, because they really allow that glow, that softness on, on your portrait. Um, but the yellow will be a bit like that. It's like a dampened down version of the red filter. So it's kind of dramatic, but not as dramatic. But it will still give you a nice separation between sky and clouds. It will still give you that effect because it's um, it's going to allow that um, that yellow through. So you are going to get get some drama. You're going to get some shadows still. Um, you're going to find that actually in many ways the yellow filter is like the all-purpose black and white filter. It will give in most scenarios it would do something good for you. Um, I think that the red will give you the the, the most drama. I'd say the green will give you the lightest photo and then the yellow will give you somewhere in the middle between the red um, and the green. You will get, you know, some darker clouds, you'll, um, you'll get a nice separation. Um, I guess if you're going to shoot foliage and things again, you'll get that separation between the flowers and the foliage, but just not as deep, not as much drama, not as much contrast, but some. So you might find that the yellow filter ends up being your most used filter because it will give you that kind of middle ground. Um, yeah, I could go into more, but I won't because I want to keep to my three minutes. Maybe I have, maybe I haven't. But that's basically what the filters do. They allow a color to come through, the color of that filter, and they block other colors. So that allows you to basically look at a scene and think, right, I want to get a really dramatic photo. So you would put the red filter on, and then there would come in darker skies, darker shadows, white's popping, wow, drama. You think, actually, no, I'd like a lighter sky today. I want the whole thing to be a bit more detailed. You put the green filter on. Or I want this to be a bit more of a softer image. Then you put the um, yellow filter on. And so it kind of creates that balance. It gives you that option to really have your own control over your photo when you take your pictures. And it's basically what these filters are doing, giving you control um, at the time of actually taking the photo rather than doing it after in Photoshop. So it's a really quick, simple, dumbed down version. There's so much more detail I could go into, um, but hopefully this helps. The other colors of the filters were obviously orange and blue, which um, were kind of used in the old days and 
Um, they obviously had their own effects as well, but I won't go into that now. But the red, the yellow, and the green are what we've got in our cameras. And yeah, hopefully that will help you. And um, yeah, go and try it out, see how it works for you. Cool, I'll see you soon. Thanks.